ASP.NET Core offers different return types for Web API controllers. Each of these return types has its own use cases. The main return types are 1. Returning a specific type 2. Returning an I action result and 3. Returning an action result of T. In this video, let's dive deep into each of these return types and understand when it is appropriate to use each of these. Hello everyone. My name is Rahul and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Without much delay, let's head off to the console and create a .NET Web API application. I'll use the .NET CLI and use new and specify React template. This will create a single page application template using React. To open this in Rider, I'll use Rider64 and specify dot to open the current folder. So this opens up the current project. You can use the IDE of your choice. I have the project opened up here and we have the single page application template. This has a default controller, which is the weather forecast controller. So let's go into that and understand more about the return types in Web API. As you can see, the controller here returns a complex data type, which is the I enumerable of weather forecast. It can also be a primitive type like integers, booleans, etc. Since in this method, there are no parameters or conditions to check for this method, it is okay to return a specific type because that's the only option that will be returned from this particular piece of code. The other option from this code is for it to throw an exception. Let's run this application and we can see this return type in action. Since this is a single page application, the first time we run, it's going to have an NPM installed. If you want to understand more about this template and how it works, I have talked about it earlier in this channel. The application is running successfully. So let's go to the slash weather forecast endpoint and we can see the return data. In here, it is returned as a JSON structure, which is an I enumerable of weather forecast. If we see the network request, we can see that this returns a 200 status code for this particular request. So anytime you don't have any conditions to check or to cater for, you can always return back a specific type, as in this case. Next, let's look into the I action result return type. The I action result is appropriate when multiple action results is possible for this endpoint. An action result are simply types that represent various HTTP status codes. When the return type is an I action result, any non-abstract action result class can be used to return the data. Some of the common types are OK object result, bad request result, not found result, etc. Let's see this in action. Let's say for this function, we add a new parameter, which is string city name. So this takes in a city name and returns back the weather data for that particular city. Now, in this controller endpoint, we have multiple cases that needs to be handled. We need to handle the case where the city name is not valid and return back probably a not found result. And also the case where the city name is valid, where we need to respond back with a list of weather forecast data. So this is a good use case to return an I action result. So let's update the I enumerable to return an I action result. Now this immediately throws an exception on the enumerable type being returned because it's not a valid action result instance. To do that, let's create a new instance of the OK object result because that is an instance with the OK status code and pass in this data inside that. So let's make sure the closing bracket is after the two array and then use the semicolon. Now this fixes this return type. If we go into the definition of the OK object result, we can see that this is an instance of the object result class. If we go further in, we can see that inherits from the action result class, which in turn results from the I action result interface. So because of this, we are able to use the OK object result. Now let's handle the case where the city name can be null or empty. So we can write if string dot is null or empty of the city name. In this case, we can appropriately return a new bad request result. So we can also pass in an optional message saying city name must not be null. Since we are passing back in a content, we need to use the bad request object result. So this fixes the error with the parameter. Now there could also be a case where the city name is not found. So let's assume that when the city name is equal to invalid, 
You could have a list of cities which returns valid city names or not. For now, let's assume if the city name is invalid and then in this case, we can return a new not found result. So if you want to pass the result message, you can use the not found object result and pass the message city name is not found. So now, as you can see in this method, now handles multiple use cases and it has different return types, which makes it appropriate to use the I action result return type. Rather than creating a new instance of these result classes every time, you can also use the convenience methods that's built into the controller base. To use that, when you need to return a bad request result, you can replace simply this with the bad request method. So if you see to the definition, you can see that's defined inside the controller base and this in turn creates a new instance of the bad request object result. Similarly, we can also use for the not found and also the OK object result. So for bad found, we can remove the new and say bad request. And similarly, for OK, we can return a new OK response. All of them internally does exactly what we did here earlier. So let's run this application to see this in action. If you were to navigate back to slash weather forecast, now in this case, it returns the city name must not be null or empty. So if we open up the network tab and refresh this request again, you can see that the return status code now is 400. Now, if we were to pass a new request, let's say with city name is equal to London, now this returns back the data as expected. So here you can see that it now returns the 200, which is the OK content result. Now again, to give this an invalid value, let's pass in invalid as the text, and this now returns a 400 with a bad request result. This should be a not found, so let's go back to the code and make this as not found. So instead of bad request, we can return not found. Running that again, let's clear this and refresh the request, and this time we get back a 404 which is a not found. So this works as expected and the ASP.NET API controller is now able to return different types. So all of this now works as expected. And as you can see, the API controller endpoint is able to return different types of data to us. If you're using tools like Swagger, which generates API endpoint documentation, returning an I action result might not give it enough information on what data this particular endpoint is returning. So to support that, we can use attributes like the produces response type and explicitly specify in what the return type data is. So in this case, we have three response types, one which is the bad request. So we can say status codes dot bad request. Similarly, we can also return one for the not found. So let's say not found and also one for the okay result. In this case, we can also specify the type property and specify the type of the return data. In this case, this is going to be an I enumerable of weather forecast data. So whenever Swagger looks at this API endpoint, it has enough information to generate the documentation. If you're new to Swagger or want to set up API documentations, check out the video linked here or in the description below. This brings us to the last possible return type, which is an action result of type T. When using action result of T, it's a mix of both I action result and also the specific type. So we can either return a specific instance of the action result or also a specific type. Let's see this in action. To start with, let's update this action result to return an action result of type T. So in this case, I know this is going to return an I enumerable of weather forecast. Now everything works as expected because this is also returning an action result for each of the valid cases. However, in the OK content result, we can remove this and simply return back an enumerable data as before with the specific types. This is because there is an implicit cast from this data type into the action result. One thing to notice though, is that this needs to be a concrete type, like in this case, it's returning an array or a list. If you were to return an I enumerable by removing this, it would start throwing exceptions. This is because the implicit cast operators cannot convert from an interface to this particular type. So make sure to return a concrete type like an array or list when returning an enumerable of the data. Since the action result already specifies the type information, 
when adding the produce response type, we no longer need to pass in this type information. This will be automatically inferred by the attribute. So this also reduces the code for producer's response type. Now, if we were to run this application, this is going to behave very similar with the I action result. The application is running successfully. So let's make a call to weather forecast and we can see this now returns a 400. So if you were to pass in a valid city name, it returns a 200 response now. And if we were to make the city name to be invalid, then this returns a 404 not found response. So this works very similar to the I action result, except we had to write less code. Most of the controllers fall under this scenario where it has to return a specific type in the happy path scenario. When there are unexpected conditions or validations, it needs to return an instance of the action result class. I hope this helps you to understand more about the action return types available in web API and you can choose appropriately when you write the next controller endpoint. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button and drop in comments if you have any questions or feedback. If you want to be notified of future such videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button. It really helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon.